This video is sponsored in part by Hackster.io. And now we also have a new sponsor, Squarespace. Now I know a majority of you guys watching could probably make your own website, but when Squarespace can make it for you, why not use that time to do other cool stuff? For instance, Squarespace will install, patch, and constantly upgrade your site, while you could be making a squirrel-detecting Nerf gun. So go ahead and head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash tinkernut to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the action. You know, there once was a time when a single video game would take up an entire cabinet. And if people wanted to watch, they would just all crowd around the cabinet. It's true. Just ask Billy Mitchell. Or don't, he may end up lying to you. Nowadays we have Twitch, where you can play a video game and stream it live to millions of viewers. But not every gaming platform supports Twitch and sometimes it's a little complicated to figure out. So as you all saw last week, this project is about creating an automatic Twitch streaming device with a Raspberry Pi. So the idea for this project is to take a Raspberry Pi, plug in some type of video input, and then stream it to twitch.tv. But there's one glaring problem with this idea. The Raspberry Pi does not support video input by default. You could try a USB video capture device that supports the Raspberry Pi, but I guarantee you the quality is gonna be pretty poor. So I can honestly say that this project would not even be feasible if it wasn't for this little device. This is an Alveda Video, I don't know how to say it, it's spelled right there, HDMI to CSI2 adapter. It connects to the Raspberry Pi through its CSI2 camera port, which means that it can take full advantage of 1080p video. The newer chips even support HDMI audio, but you have to connect it through the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pin. The downside to this chip is it's more than double the cost of a Raspberry Pi, but it'll still probably come out cheaper than other HD video capture devices, Plus, you can do a lot more with this since it's connected to a Raspberry Pi. Speaking of which, let's connect it. There's a version of the chip for the Raspberry Pi 3 series and the Raspberry Pi Zero series. So if you're interested in getting one, you can find out more information at the project page below. So grab your little SD card and put it in the PC. Download Raspbian and Etcher to copy it to the SD. Plug it in a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, make sure it ain't loose, then plug in some power to give it some juice. Connect to your Wi-Fi, give it an IP that's static, then open the Raspberry Config and enable these to make them automatic. Ah, oh, man, I've been reading too much Dr. Seuss. Then just connect the HDMI board to the camera interface and let's see if it works. So with an HDMI source plugged in, I'm gonna test things out by running this little raspy vid script that will save 10 seconds of video. And then using a Windows command prompt and PSCP, I'm just gonna transfer that video file over to my desktop and see if it plays. All right, the next step is to stream to Twitch. So just log into your Twitch account, go to your dashboard and find your private streaming key. And copy it down because we're gonna need it for later. Now back on the Raspberry Pi, download libav tools, which will install avconv. Now you can just use this command to stream your HDMI video source to Twitch. And don't forget to plug in your own Twitch streaming key to the end of this script. To see if it worked, just head over to your Twitch dashboard and see if you can see anything streaming. If all you wanted was a basic command to stream to Twitch, well, there you go. But you know I can't stop there. It's not how I work. I've got a problem. So to take this idea a step further, I wanted to incorporate a single push button so that when you push it, it starts streaming. And you know what, let's add some light up LEDs, why not? What I ended up getting was this light up on off push button switch. Then I also splurged and got these LED backlight panels. All of which you can find links for on the project page in the video description. So I grabbed a breadboard and started connecting everything together. Here's a basic schematic of what I ended up with. So now to make it all work together, it's time to code! So what I did was I created a new Python script and I began importing the dependencies and you know what, why don't you just take a look at the code over on my GitHub page. You can clone it or copy it, but make sure you enter in your Twitch streaming key and then give it a run. So running the Python script, you should see this output and then heading over to the breadboard, the lights should work, which they do. And then the stream should work, which it does. And then whenever you press the button again, everything should stop, which it does. 
To make it so that the script runs automatically whenever you reboot the Pi, make the script executable and then add it to your etc slash rc.local file. So I took some jumper wires and soldered them to the button pins. Then I did the same thing to the LED panels, but on the positive leg I soldered a 330 ohm resistor. I took measurements of all the parts and imported it into Tinkercad and designed a nice little case prime for 3D printing. I hot glued all the parts into place including this little micro USB extension cable and then put it all together. In order to play this on a TV and stream it to Twitch I actually used an HDMI splitter which was about 10 bucks on Amazon. And then it was just as simple as a push of a button. This was actually a really fun project, mainly because I kept thinking of all the possibilities I could use with this little HDMI input. So don't think you've seen the last of it. What would you stream with this? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any ideas, you can submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. You can click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to donate at patreon.com slash tinkernut. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to youtube.com slash tinkernut.